whenever I do a specialty water cooling build for the channel, it's inevitable that I'm gonna be almost flooded with questions about water cooling, especially from people who've never done it before and want to get into it. Beginners are often intimidated by what they have to piece together as far as a parts list. How do they know what to buy? How do they know which blocks, which fittings, which hardware to use? Well, I wanted to start a series on this channel for water cooling for beginners. And this box arrived just in time. This is the Thermaltake M360 Plus liquid cooling kit. It's supposed to have everything inside that you need to get started on your water cooling journey. So let's crack it open and find out what it comes with. So I've actually not opened this box up just yet. So you guys are gonna come along on that journey with me. However, I wanted to let you guys know that I had the idea to do a water cooling for beginners, I guess, series of videos a little while ago. And if you guys are familiar with my live streams, I actually talked about this a little bit uh, last week. However, I wasn't really sure how I was going to approach this. And then this box showed up. This is Thermaltake's M360 Plus. It comes with what they say is everything you need to start water cooling. So we're gonna find out if that's true. And then in subsequent entries into this series, we're actually gonna build a system using this kit and a chassis that I think Thermaltake is also sending over. Just so you guys know, this is not a Thermaltake sponsored video. However, this is actually a really great starter point for people looking to get into custom water cooling who are intimidated by the absolutely immense number of parts choices that you guys have to make if you wanna to put together a system like this. So after we get everything unboxed and we see what we have laid out on the table in front of us, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what else you guys might need if you're first starting out in water cooling, and then we'll kinda of see where it goes from there because I have no script for this video, and um, yeah, kinda of free form. So let's dive into it. Okay, so we've got our second camera set up here. We've got a good angle down onto the table so you can see what I pull out of the box. Hopefully it doesn't just go, I don't know, pitching right over and crash the floor because that would be terrible. Uh, but let's get this box open and see what's inside. How did, I got it. All right, so first thing, we got some instructions. Uh, looks like pretty basic instructions, just one page. Um, I'm fairly sure, because it looks like these are all retail boxes in here, that the, the individual components are gonna have their own instructions, but this kind of instructs you on how to, how to put the loop together. Doesn't look like there's anything on here about bending tubes, which is something that you definitely have to know and something that we are gonna cover in this series. Uh, so let's get the first thing out. And that is the Pacific W4 Plus CPU water block. This is their RGB enabled block. Uh, it fits, it says AM4 and 1151. I'm pretty sure it probably fits, yeah, it fits It fits all modern sockets basically. Uh, so, where's my knife? I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we got instructions in here on how to install the block itself. So um, even though the, the instructions that come with this kit are, are a little sparse, I'm sure that each component will, uh, will walk you through those steps. Uh, so we've got our block here. Feels pretty substantial. I've never actually used a Thermaltake block before, uh, but you could see the RGB illuminated ring, the, the in and the out port. Uh, and then you have, I believe this is a nickel plated copper base plate, and then your connector for your RGB. Now, how does it connect to RGB? This looks like a proprietary connector. It's gotta be something in this. This is it. Oh, good, okay. So this plugs in to this, and then you have a uh, just a USB 2.0 interface that you could use to control the RGB on the block. So that is good. Uh, also comes with a controller. Oh, okay, it looks like a USB hub. So this will be good for controlling um, all the other fans and whatnot that are coming in this kit, I assume. 
Um, but let's dive into that a little bit further, get this packed back up. Okay, so the next thing that's in the box here is your silicone hose. Now, we are gonna go into this in a little more detail when we get into the actual process of building your loop and bending your tubes. However, this is something that's essential if you are gonna be bending PETG or acrylic. This is gonna be an insert that goes inside the tube and is gonna keep it from collapsing on itself as you do the bends. If you do not have this inside the tube when you go to bend, you'll actually just end up with a flat, mushed piece of garbage. Uh, so this is essential and I'm glad that they threw this in there. Also, it's kind of fun to play with. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm a 12 year old. Next, next up is our tubing. We have a uh, 16 millimeter PETG. So um, typically there are three different sizes of hard tube. You have 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and 16 millimeter. Now when it comes to hard tube, it does not matter the inside, um, the, in the interior diameter. It only matters the exterior diameter because that is what is getting uh, forced into the compression fitting. Uh, as opposed to with soft tubing where you actually need the interior di diameter because that is what is being put onto a barb. So they give you 500 millimeters. Oh no, I'm sorry. They give you four pieces of 500 millimeters of tubing. So we have two full meters of tubing or for those of you in the United States, like 47% of my audience, it's about six feet of tubing. And here it is. Uh, so this is what we're gonna use to do our build when we get into it. Now, now what you guys like, be it you know thicker tubing or thinner tubing, that's a matter of personal preference. Uh, however, if you're gonna be going with this kit, they give you the 16. And 16 typically looks good if you don't have a whole lot of stuff in the system and you wanna fill space. Uh, when I was doing Project Baron, I considered using 16 because there was such a, an enormous amount of uh, room on the inside of the case. I, but I prefer personally the look of 12 millimeter tubing. So that's what I used. A lot of people are actually questioning why I didn't use 16, because it's my system and I didn't want it. We got some cooling here. This is the C1000 Pure Clear Coolant. I'm actually really glad that they did not ship with an opaque coolant or a pastel because those have some challenges associated with them, which again, we'll talk about in a later video. Uh, but this is just their clear coolant. I assume this has an antimicrobial and anti-corrosive. Yep, ready to use anti-corrosion fluid for PC cooling system. Uh, protects copper, aluminum, brass, and nickel. And they give you a liter of it. Boom. Should be good for, uh, I mean, if they're putting it in this kit, this is enough to fill your loop. So you shouldn't need any more than this. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, so this is your pump res combo. Pacific PR22, it's a D5 pump. Uh, and it is, as you guys can see on the box here, it's all built into one. And you know what, let's get this out of here and, uh, and look at it in a little more detail. So this is also something that is RGB illuminated. You see that there is actually RGB um, control wires on the top of the pump, sorry, top of the reservoir housing. Uh, and then you have, it does come with its own hub as well. Same thing that we saw with the, um, the block. So I don't know if we're gonna need to use both of these. Uh, I guess once we get into this in a little more detail, we'll find out. Uh, but I assume it's the same, yep, same control system. Uh, you plug the RGB control wire into this USB 2.0 header and then plug it into the controller and go from there. What wiring is this? I don't know, I'll have to read the instructions. But it comes with, I assume it comes with everything you need to plug it all up. But here are your mounting brackets uh, and here are your mounting rings. So when you mount these, you, you typically have several different ways that you can choose to mount these. A lot of people like to mount them to uh, fans or to radiators because uh, these brackets are typically spaced for that. Although I, I, 
This is the first time using it or seeing it, so I might be wrong on that as far as the thermal take version of it goes. Um, but like I said, I'll read the directions, but it looks like it comes like it comes with everything that you need to both mount it and hook it up uh, to your system. I don't know if I like the red, well, if I like the red ring here. Uh, if this is an RGB unit, why well, have a red ring? I don't know about that. Uh, but it's I like that the D5 pump comes pre-installed so that you don't have to worry about installing a pump, making sure that the seal is right and all that. Um, but yeah, this looks like a pretty solid unit. Big reservoir. Probably look pretty cool. All right, let's get this back in the box if I can and then see what else is in here. This isn't going well. This is like refolding a map. Do you guys remember maps? When was the last time any of you guys used a map? I used maps. When I first started driving, I had to print, I had to print out map quest directions and bring them with me because that's how old I am. Smartphones clearly didn't exist. This is ridiculous. Just get in there. Close enough, I guess. All right. What else do we have? We have a three pack of Ring Plus 120 millimeter fans, Ring Plus 12 fans. Um, these are really nice fans actually. Uh, this is like their second generation or maybe it's even their third generation of the Ring fans. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're GUI on the, for, the, for the control software in Windows is actually really neat. Uh, pretty intuitive and pretty easy to use. That's actually one of the better ones out there. Uh, and the ring fans themselves have really nice illumination uh, around the outside. Yeah, I've never had any problems with these with thermal take fans, um, and they look pretty neat. So this is what we're going to be strapping to our radiator. Speaking of the radiator, why don't we take a look at that next? Because the radiator, from what I understand, is pretty nifty. So the Pacific RL360 Plus, what makes it plus? What makes it RGB is actually this strip right on the side. Let's see if there's any other pictures of it on the box. There is not. So we're going to have to open this up so I could show you guys what makes this special. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, and something that we are going to talk about in a little more detail when we get into the water cooling, um, the building the system, is that this is an aluminum radiator. So you want to make sure if you're using an aluminum radiator that you're using all aluminum components in your system. If you use an aluminum radiator and some copper parts, you're mixing metals and you're going to end up with issues. So this is just mounting hardware and uh, plugs. Let me get this out of the way. Open. Wow, this is a thick mother. Holy cow. Okay, so this is an enormous radiator. This is, I think, a 60 mil. Something along those lines. I think it's a 60 mil radiator. Uh, in any event, you have your fill ports, or you have your, your ports here. You also have them on the other, uh, you can't even see that. Okay. So you have your ports here and you have your ports on the other side as well so it doesn't matter which way you orient it and that's why it comes with these plugs so that you can plug up the ones that you're not using uh, but man this is a this is an enormous beast uh, but it comes with this really cool RGB strip uh, and it fixes uh, through the 3M tape to the side of the radiator and this is actually a uh, an RGB illuminated panel that again is controlled with the same proprietary uh, plug it comes with again another controller uh, but this so a 360 is typically enough to cool an entire system CPU and GPU um, especially one that's this thick so this should be good enough even if you're going to be expanding on this kit and you want more cooling capacity, you shouldn't need to add another radiator, although more is more is usually better. Um, but you don't need to, this is definitely enough. Okay, got that out of the way. The only things left in here, aside from the power supply 
uh, jumper, which I'm actually kind of glad that they gave you. Uh, this is used, you plug this onto the end of your power supply, you can actually turn the power supply on without having it plugged into a motherboard, which means that you can run your pump, you can run your loop without having power delivered to your system. And it's very important when you're leak testing. Uh, if you are leak testing and you have a leak and there's power to your system, you can then have a, you can potentially get a short. Um, whereas if things are not powered on, you, uh, you avoid that risk. And then here's the last thing that comes in this kit, and these are all your fittings. Now, I was told, so we got a couple of, so we have a, uh, a tightening tool, we have a couple of 90 degree fittings, but I was told that Thermal Take was sending uh, with this kit, jeez, uh, my knife fell on the floor, was sending with this kit their new Pacific C Pro fittings. Saw these at CES, and they really impressed me because check that out. This is this is what screws in to your um, to your G1 quarter thread on the block, on the pump, or on your radiator. Look at the profile on that. It is there's nothing there, and the reason that this is good is because the sleeve is actually housed inside of the cap. So why that's good is that means that you could have this screwed into your fitting and then you can, instead of, a lot of times, let me back up, a lot of times with fittings, they look like this. And if you want to get a tube in there, it involves a lot of gymnastics with having to wrench the tubing uh, as you're kind of pivoting it and squeezing it into a tight space. Because this is now like this instead, the tube can be in here and you could actually just, it just, let me see how well I'm capturing this here. It just kinda, it just slides right across here and screws down as opposed to having to get the tube into something that's much, much taller, like that's, that's about that height. So, I'm definitely sure that I'm not exactly explaining this in the best possible manner. Um, but overall, what this does is it allows you to squeeze your tubing into much, much tighter spots without having to worry about prying things apart, like pushing things apart physically in order to create a little separation to pop the tube into that taller fitting. It just slides right on there instead because this is, this is there's just nothing there. Just, this, is, this, is, this is a great, idea. I've not seen any other companies do this yet. Um, I have a couple of friends who have used these fittings and they say that they are amazing. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they seal as well as, uh, as some other fittings. Uh, and if they do, then uh, this is a hell of an innovation. So yeah, there you go. There's your Pacific C Pro fitting. So I'm kind of buried in stuff here, guys, but that is a wrap on the Thermaltake M360 Plus RGB all-in-one cooling kit. Now, the thing that this does not include is a heat gun, and that is definitely something that we're gonna need if we're gonna be bending tubing. So this is what we're gonna be getting into in this series, what else you might need, and how to put this kind of a kit together. But just my first impression, my initial impression of this kit is that it feels pretty high quality, I'm not a fan of the aluminum radiator. However, if you're using it in conjunction with other aluminum parts, it should be fine. And if we're using, if we're staying within Thermaltake's ecosystem, then there shouldn't be any problems at all. So that's it for the M360 Plus. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of Thermaltake's kind of all-in-one beginner's liquid cooling kit. What else would you guys have included in the box? Uh, is there anything that you wish that you saw that you didn't? Um, are you looking forward to our water cooling for beginners series using this kit? Hit me up down below and uh, I'll be uh, hanging out in the comments and try to answer as much stuff as I can. Until then, get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. Thanks for sticking around for this enormously long video. I'll see you next time.